Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Fleming and today we are uh, doing another video uh, from A Course in Miracles. We're doing uh, uh, chapter two, part five, chapter two, part five A of uh, special principles of miracle workers. Uh, last week when I did the function of the miracle worker, um, that was a you know came out to be like 38 39 minutes or something like that um, I didn't want to add anything else because you know it just makes it just too long so I decided to do this as a separate segment and so here we go so let's begin special principles of miracle workers all right The miracle abolishes the need for lower order concerns. Since it is an out of pattern time interval, the ordinary considerations of time and space do not apply. When you perform a miracle, I will arrange both time and space to adjust to it. All right. So um, this uh, this coincides with one of the principles of miracles, uh, principles of miracles number 47, which uh, reads the miracle is a learning device that lessens the need for time. It establishes an out of pattern time interval, not under the usual laws of time. In this sense, it is timeless. OK. So basically just practically uh, just for practicality, because I've you know, I do practical uh, interpretations um, practically um, or for practicality, uh, the miracle can be just a change of perception. So I know a lot of times when we think about miracles, we think about you know water into wine and raising the you know dead bring bringing the uh or reanimating the dead or bring the dead back to life or something like that uh or resurrecting the dead uh, uh we think about walking on water and things like that but a miracle is a change of perception so you know, as far as, uh, you know, bringing, you know, as far as resurrecting the dead, if the perception is that death, uh, you know, that death uh, is real, uh, a miracle would change the perception, uh, radically change the perception about death, that death doesn't exist. So that was the purpose of that miracle. Um, Master Teacher Jesus was teaching that death did not exist or death wasn't real. So he performed the miracle to resurrect Lazarus. But a miracle generally is a change of perception that changed the uh, people in that time's perception when they saw their brother Lazarus uh, walk out of the tomb. Uh, it changed people's perceptions when they saw that there was plenty of wine and they thought they thought the wine was over. It changed people's perceptions when uh, there was plenty of loaves of bread um, and fish for the people to eat when Jesus performed the miracle when they had masses of people that were there. But at the same time, they had uh, supposedly run out of bread. Um, or run out of food. And so Jesus performed a miracle that changed everyone's perception. That is the key. So regardless of the manifestation, if it changes the perception of another, um, then it changes the perception from a perception of lack to a perception of abundance, from a perception of emptiness to a perception of, fill, of being filled, uh, from a perception of fear to a perception of love, that, my brothers and sisters, is a miracle. Okay. So. I, um, uh, I, uh, had a friend that uh, told me a situation about, um, their, um, ex-husband, um, and that, um, they were telling me about all of the different things that, um, that they went through, 
um, at the hands of their uh, ex-husband and things like that. And so after they were finished uh, venting, which is how I just basically kind of looked at it, they were just venting or just uh, uh, just uh, sharing uh, 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 with me uh, some of their uh, frustrations in the past, which that's that's fine. We're all human and we all go through this. Um, then when I received an opportunity to talk in depth about this, um, I asked a question. I said, well, uh, tell me something. Uh, did you learn anything from that experience? And so they told me at that point, uh, well, yeah, I learned a lot. Uh, okay. Okay. So if my question, if you learn something, then how could anything that you experienced be defined as bad? Because anything that is learned is uh, for our growth, which is our highest good, which is ultimately good. So, and then I expounded on, on, on that. I said, just, I want you to imagine something. I want you to uh, think about before you came here and before your ex-husband came here. And I want, to, I want you to think about the conversation uh, that your souls had with each other when you explained your soul, explained to your ex-husband's soul that there were some things that you wanted to learn uh, in this incarnation when you came in and you needed uh, them to teach you these things. You needed them to be this certain way so that you could learn these certain things. And so I want you to think about that and I want you to uh, imagine what uh, his soul said to yours where he said, okay, well, I will do that for you because I love you. So even though we will not remember this conversation, even though um, I will be a villain in your eyes, I will still do this. I will still come in with you. I will be this person that you need me to be so that you can experience the growth that you need to experience because I love you. And that is what his soul said to yours. This is what I told my friend. This uh, conversation took place about two weeks ago. Um, after going through this, and I'm giving you all the abbreviated version, but after explaining this and explaining that, you know, there are no victims and there are no accidents and that everything that we experience is for our highest good. And it was already arranged by our souls, by our higher selves. And we're just experiencing and what's experiencing it. And we're thinking that, you know, this stuff is happening to us and it's actually happening for us. And what my friend experienced at that point was a change in perception. What my friend experienced at that point, she, what she said at that point was like, oh my God, I never thought of it that way. So she experienced a change of perception, which technically qualifies as a miracle. A miracle is a change of perception. Practically, it's a change of perception. That's what it is, a change of perception. We can attribute all sorts of uh, uh, things in our mind. We can, we're can we very imaginative. Or many people are very imaginative. So we can think you know, quickly to come to mind as far as what a miracle is, but the bottom line is a miracle is a change in perception. So I just wanted to kind of discuss that with you all. So let's move on. A clear distinction between what is created and what is made is essential. All forms of healing rest on this fundamental correction in level perception. Okay. So I'm going to expound on A Course in Miracles definition of what is created versus what is made. A Course in Miracles defines what is created uh, as being whatever we create from love is created. Um, whatever is made from fear is made, this is bottom line. Um, what we make is not real because what we make is not going to last. What we create is, it, it, it's eternal. So any creation that's made out of love, you have no idea the extent of that creation. You have no idea what that act of love that you exhibited to another, uh, what sort of ripple effects that's actually going to have. That's what it means in A Course in Miracles by interlocking chains of forgiveness, which ultimately uh, end in or result in the at one 
um, or interlocking chains or basically ripples, ripples of love that are basically just spread out. So for example, um, there was a pay it forward um, uh, movement uh, a few years back um, where people were uh, doing things out of kindness for someone else. And it began to spread all over the United States, uh, the pay it forward uh, movement. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. So we have no idea what, what, what our creations or, or what impact our creations will have on another. They will spread and spread. And next thing you know, it can be somewhere in Ghana or in Egypt or in Australia or in South America, in the deep South America somewhere. So you never know what impact your thoughts, your your actions, your 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 creations of love will have on another. So um basically what is created versus what is made what is made is things like fear um you know uh an example of what is made is uh for example a uh thought process for example that you have about another that's a, a fear-based concept that's what is made um it could be a uh, a view of another that 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 could be what is made um, but anything that is made out of fear is made. Okay, it's not real because the real, what is real, is 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 what we are, which is perfect. But things that are made, you know, just because we are perfect doesn't mean that in this dream we we doesn't mean that in this dream we are not uh, experiencing um, uh, all variations of emotion. Uh, we are experiencing love, we're experiencing fear, we're experiencing happiness, we're experiencing sadness. Um, you know, but what is made is things that are made from fear. That's a, kind of the best way I can describe it um, versus what is created comes from love. What is made comes from fear, what is created comes from love. The ego was made. The ego which essentially the ego is, uh, you know, like for example, me, Stephen Fleming, that's the ego. Um, whatever your name is, um, that's the ego. Because that's not who you really are. That's not who God made. That's who you made as far as in your, you know, as far as uh, the, the person that you wish to present to others, the person that you want to project to others is who you made. Um, and that is not real. What is real is perfect. What God made is perfect. What God created is perfect. So I'm going to make sure I say created and not made. But what, what God created is perfect. And so you have a perfect side of you. It doesn't mean that you don't cry. It doesn't mean that you don't experience a full range of emotions or anything like that. Okay. No matter what you go through, no matter where you are in life, you are still perfect. It doesn't matter. There's nothing that you can do to impact your perfection. There's nothing that you can do to impact what God created. There is nothing that you can do that can change who you are. So let's move on. So. Never confuse right and wrong mindedness. Responding to any form of error with anything except a desire to heal is an expression of this confusion. So let's say, for example, you um, have someone who tells you that they were diagnosed with some illness or there's someone that's telling you uh, about this, uh, their arthritis, or there's someone that's telling you about their cancer, or there's someone that's telling you um, about any, you know, any... Uh, sickness of, of the body if you are what of course the miracles is saying is that right-minded thinking um, means that you don't identify with the sickness you don't identify with the symptom okay so it doesn't mean that you, you that you tell them practically well the reason why you're going through this is because your mind you you, you know you have wrong mindedness people don't want to hear that so um, just practically speaking, um, just holding them in light in your mind, you know, just in light in, in your mind, you know, um, my sister, you know, uh, you are perfect 
and, 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 and I forgive that, which whatever it is that you're going through that prevents you from seeing that, from seeing the perfection that you are, okay? And, 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 and I love you. And I mean, I'm saying thinking this, nothing prevents you from thinking this, okay? There's no judgment there. You're not evaluating anything. You're basically just saying, hey, you know, um, you are perfect. And that's what I see. And you have to be, you have to be vigilant in not identifying with, because they may have a whole list of, uh, of, 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 of quote unquote facts about their illness, which justify why they have it. And you have to still sit in love um, and, 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 and be a rock essentially. And, and, and in, in your mind, you just, I understand what, what it is that you're trying to say, but all I see is perfection. And all I see is healing. That's what I see. All I see is healing. And I ask Holy Spirit to go to the root uh, of the symptom, to the cause, go to the mind and heal whatever it is that needs to be healed in you and heal whatever it is that needs to be healed in me. Because when I can perceive things, um, then I'm still kind of, uh, complicit. So if I can see, uh, any type of error, or anything like that, then there's something that needs to be corrected in me as, as well. So, you know, again, um, it's not about evaluating because everybody goes through things. It's not about evaluating things in the dream. You don't evaluate dreams, do you? You don't evaluate when a, a fly turns into a dragon, do you? You don't evaluate uh, when a, a spoon turns into a sharp knife. Um, you don't uh, evaluate when a puppy becomes a, a monster who tries to get you in a dream. Well, it's kind of the same way um, because of course in miracle states that this is a dream. And so you don't evaluate dreams. You basically just, you know, you just give them love and just understand uh, that they're going through their thing right now. That doesn't mean they're gonna go through their thing forever. It just means they're going through it right now. Just like you go through their thing, go through your things uh, at certain times. So it's about being there for another and it's about uh, holding the light or having compassion and, 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 and charity, holding the light for them, things like that. Those are things that impact, impact miracle mindedness and those are the things that actually change uh, erroneous perception. So let's move on. We're just moving right along. All right. The miracle is always a denial of this error and an affirmation of the truth. Only right mindedness can correct in a way that has any real effect. Pragmatically, what has no real effect has no real existence. Its effect then, its emptiness. Oh, its effect then is emptiness. Being without substantial content, it lends itself to projection. Okay, so let's let's take a look at that. Let's, uh, let's see what we can get here. Okay, so what this is actually saying, and this is basically this is basically a continuation of uh, the last. Um, when I was talking about like illnesses and things like that and saying that the miracle is always a denial of, of this error and an affirmation of the truth. Okay. So, um, it says only the right minded, uh, only right mindedness can correct in a way that has any real effect. So once the mind is correct, once the mind is healed, the body will follow. Um, the, the body is only a, a, a learning device. Uh, the body will manifest uh, illnesses and things like that if the mind uh, is not right-minded, okay? So the body will basically just let you know that there's something that is not right with the mind uh, if the body is showing illnesses and, and things like that. Uh, in general, that's basically how it works. So it's basically saying, so for any real effect, the mind, right-mindedness is essential. You can get... Uh, healed and stuff like that by using some sort of regimen from doctors and things like that. But the bottom line is, um, why do you think that uh, illnesses resurface? 
um, after all sorts of things. So if you're not working on you, if you're not working on yourself, but you're just basically going to get that radiation therapy and things like that as far as that cancer, but you're not working on you as far as um, changing your thinking and, and, and uh, because it's ch the chances are, 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 are moderate to high that the cancer may return. So heal the mind and the body will follow. And then there's some people that haven't had any types of, uh, of, um, of radiation therapy treatment, but they actually, at the same time, they decided to work on themselves. Um, they, you know, basically they, you know, had a new lease on life and, be and, and began to live each day uh, in, in pure enjoyment and things like that. And next thing you know, when they go back to the doctor, the cancer is completely gone. Um, so I, everyone's heard stories like this and stories like this come from actual events that actually happen. You know, that's how it happens. You know, actual events actually happen. They happen to a lot of different people and, that, and eventually stories begin to surface about how people, uh, basically had a whole, you know, had just went completely in remission. There's no sign of any cancer whatsoever. It's completely gone. So it's more than just the, uh, radiation treatments. And I'm just using cancer as an example. There's a whole slew of illnesses, a whole slew of them. So just take your pick. But the bottom line is what A Course in Miracles is saying is that it all starts with the mind. So, all right. So, let's go to the next one. The level adjustment power of the miracle induces the right perception for healing. Until this has occurred, healing cannot be understood. Forgiveness is an empty gesture unless it entails correction. Without this, it is essentially judgmental rather than healing. So let's let 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 let's talk about that for a minute. Let's let's talk about that for a minute. So it is possible to judge people as far as saying, you know, um, you know, I forgive, you know, for example, let's say it's, I, I forgive your stupidity. OK, that that doesn't sound like forgiveness at all. That sounds like you're just basically judging this person, just you're attacking this person and trying to sound like you're forgiving them. Well, I, you know, I forgive the I forgive the fact that you, you don't know anything. You know, I, I forgive the fact that you're naive, stuff like that. You know, I, I understand you can't do any better. You know, so there's certain there's certain ways, you know, as far as that, that's not true, genuine forgiveness. OK, true, genuine forgiveness comes from love. And, and, and that's that's the only way I can even describe that. Uh, I'm not going to you know get into how to sound judgmental. You know how to sound judgmental. We know how to sound judgmental if it's not authentic forgiveness. So authentic forgiveness is healing and non-authentic forgiveness is judgment, is judgmental. So that's practical, very practical. So let's go on to the next. The injunction be of one mind is the statement for revelation readiness. My request do this in remembrance of me is the appeal for cooperation from miracle workers. The two statements are not in the same order of reality. Only the latter involves an awareness of time, since to remember is to recall the past in the present. Time is under my direction, but timelessness belongs to God. In time, in time we exist for and with each other. In timelessness, we coexist with God. So, okay. Where it says be of one mind, um, and that is, uh, and that is the statement for revelation readiness, being of one mind. Well, all minds are joined automatically. So a conscious, a conscientious understanding of that, a conscious understanding of that, that all minds are joined, um, that leads to revelation readiness understanding that there are no private thoughts, understanding that, that what you think 
inevitably affects you and if, uh, whatever, whatever you think about me inevitably affects both of us. Um, if, uh, if I am not completely invulnerable um, with right mindedness, it will affect me as along with affecting you. Ultimately, you're only, you know, your thoughts are only about yourself. Whatever you think about anyone, you're really only thinking about yourself. And deep down inside, deep down inside, there's a part of our mind that actually recognizes this to be true. And when so when you speak about someone else, you feel bad. You feel it. You can actually feel the negative uh, impact of the emotion. Um, if you are in touch with your, with your thoughts, because there is a part of the mind that recognizes that you're only speaking about yourself. So the part where he says, do this in remembrance of me, he's basically saying that, um, that it's not in the same order of reality as being in one mind, because this is basically dependent on time. Um, and basically because of that, you know, um, but do this in remember of me, where he talks about do this in remember of me, he's talking about cooperation between miracle workers or cooperation between, uh, between uh, people who are of uh, the same right mindedness. Um, so that's what he's referring to where he says, uh, do this in remembrance of me is an appeal for the cooperation from miracle workers or people that help to change perception, people that help um, others in their changing of their perception. And notice I said help others, not you don't force people to change perception. Anything that is done is done from love. It has to be done from love. It has to be accepted by the other person. The other person has to be willing to accept the change of perception. You can't force anything on anyone. So you can do much on behalf of your own healing and that of others if in a situation calling for help you think of it this way i am here only to be truly helpful i am here to represent he or him who sent me i do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. And so that is a very profound uh, prayer that is a prayer that's actually um, that's actually uh, read at uh, at a few Course in Miracles groups that that I attend. Um, so they will read that before we start discussing any aspect or any part of the book. Um, and it just has us, you know, when we when we read it together, it kind of brings us into one mind where we are ready to work together to discover the truth because we're truth we're truth seekers. You know, people that are in A Course in Miracles are truth seekers. We are looking and seeking for the truth. Um, and it says in the Bible, seeking you shall find. So we are truth seekers. Um, and so when we all read that together, I'm here only to be truly helpful. Um, and uh, I am here to represent, to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. Um, after we finish praying that, there is um, a cooperation. Uh, there is a, um, a, uh, an integrity of the group that can't be denied. That can't be denied. It's a very powerful prayer. Um, to expound, to uh, interpret this. And so what he's saying is basically you can do, you can do so many things to, to, to influence your own healing by attempting to help other people with theirs. Um, when you, in fact, are attempting to help someone, you are, in fact, helping yourself as well. 
So you're helping the one that you're trying to help and ultimately you're also helping yourself. So this is A Course in Miracles, uh, part five, A, Special Principles of Miracle Workers. Um, next week we are doing Okay, so next next week we will be doing A Course in Miracles chapter 2, part 6, Fear and Conflict. Chapter 2, part 6, Fear and Conflict. I want to thank you all for for uh, watching tonight. I want to thank I want to thank you all for watching. Um, again, my name is Stephen Fleming. And I want you to wish you a wonderful, wonderful evening. Have a great day.